What's up guys, this is Mike, the Detroit Borg, with a look at the new fourth generation Kindle, which just went on sale this week. Amazon has also announced a touched enabled version called the Kindle Touch, as well as the Kindle Fire Tablet, which are arriving in mid-November. I have those on order, so stay tuned for those reviews and comparisons. In the meantime, you can get your hands on the No Frills Kindle 4th Gen right now for as little as $79 with ads, or $109 with no ads. We'll take a look at what that means in the following review. There is no 3G version of the standard Kindle, just Wi-Fi. The Kindle Touch will be the only 3G capable Kindle once it arrives. Quickly going over the changes, the new Kindle is less than 6 ounces and is 30% lighter than the Kindle 3 with an 18% smaller body, but keeps the same 6-inch e-ink display. The new Kindle also gets the latest e-ink display technology with faster page turns. The new Kindle also loses the QWERTY keyboard in favor of an on-screen one, which we'll take a look at in the demonstration. Now the Kindle 4th generation, just like the 3rd uh, generation, ships in this frustration-free packaging. It's also very eco-friendly. It's all cardboard, and you don't need any knives to open this. All you have is this little pull tab, so we'll pull that. It should open right up. And there is the Kindle. Now before we get to the Kindle, let's take a look to see the literature they include with the Kindle. Uh, this falls in line with the eco-friendly design of this packaging, so instead of getting a little booklet, all you do is get this little card, which again looks like it's made out of recycled paper. Uh, so on the front is the basic instructions. Of course, if you want more detailed instructions, the Kindle has that already in the reader. On the back, we have the license and uh, terms of use. Now let's just lift the Kindle out of its cradle and you can see it's wrapped in plastic. At least on the front, the back isn't wrapped. It's just the front plate. So let's peel this off. There you go. And let's put that aside and take a look to see the cable they included. So we have a USB cable. This is probably a micro USB cable as it has always been. So there we go. Now you notice they did not include a wall adapter as they have with previous Kindles. So in order to charge this, you'll just have to connect this to any powered USB port such as on your computer or anything like a DVD player inside your car or whatever. Now since this Kindle is not touch based, it does have some physical controls. So we have a familiar D-pad for navigating. We have the menu button, the home button, a on-screen keyboard button and a back button. The on-screen keyboard is controlled by this D-pad. So in order to select a number or letter, you'll have to use this D-pad. On the side, we'll find our back and forward button. So the forward button is larger and you press down at an angle. So press this way. Same with the back button and there's a duplicate set on the right. Now the Kindle's EE screen is matte, so there's less glare. So you see a little glare, and it's not that bad at all. It's certainly very different if you have a glass front panel. We do have a Kindle logo embossed on the top, and noticeably, we have a very low profile bezel. Now, this will be different with the touch based Kindle, which will need a larger lip in order to uh, set up the infrared technology, which is used to identify the positioning of your finger on the panel. In this case, it's not touch based, so it's able to keep a very low profile. Now, on the back of the Kindle, we'll find this one piece plate which looks like it's removable but it's not this is not meant to be opened by the end user you can't change the battery or add additional storage now below all this regulatory labeling we'll find some battery connectors now th these are terminals for cases to interface with the battery so some cases have built-in lights and instead of providing their own battery, they can tap into the Kindle's battery. This was similar technology used on the previous Kindle, but it was located in a different location. It was located on the side. And of course, we have our power button and micro USB connector, as well as an LED indicator. All right, so it wants me to completely charge the Kindle, but I'm not going to do that right at this moment. We just want to take a look at the menu system, so let's power it on. I'm going to hold the power button. So we can see the LED indicator and it's now booting up. All right, so we're gonna set this up for the first time and you can see you can use the D-pad here to select. Of course, I'm in the United States. Uh, next thing I need to do is log into Wi-Fi so it can connect to the Amazon servers and connect to my account and download all of my previous purchases. So I found my time capsule router, so let's connect to that. Now I need to enter my password and this is where you're going to need to use the on-screen keyboard and the D-pad. So it wants me to press the keyboard button right here. Alright, so we have our on-screen keyboard here which is surprisingly an A through Z keyboard. It's not a QWERTY keyboard which is what I'm used to. Now you can see it's actually a tabbed keyboard so if you want to go to symbols you have to go to the top and select them. So let's go to symbols here. 
So you see I have a whole host of symbols. Go back to ABC, this is lowercase, uppercase. You can see these are other characters. I see umlauts and S sets and everything you need for other languages. So I'm going to enter in a fake password so you guys don't know what it is. I'm just going to pick, I don't know, uh, Detroit Borg. So I can, ta I can click it left and right one at a time or hold it. So it kind of it scrolls past pretty quickly. Anyway, it uh, gives you an idea. I don't really like that sort of keyboard, but as long as I don't have to use it too much, it's not a big deal. Anyway, let's put in my real password and get this started. And once we're done with the keyboard, just hit done and hit submit. Now on the top, we have some indicators here, including Wi-Fi strength and battery level. Now the next thing I need to do is register my account, or you can create a new one. Uh, so you can do it from your computer or create an account on the Kindle. I'm going to do use an existing Amazon account. Now I just need to enter that information in. Now this brings us to the main home screen, and you can see Welcome Michael because it knows who I am now. And we can transfer our Kindle content from the cloud. We can also take a look at the uh, American New Oxford American Dictionary, Oxford Dictionary of English, Kindle User's Guide, and Archived Items. So if we go to Archived Items, we'll see my previous purchases. So you can see Evolution is a book uh, that I read recently, so let's click on that. So the download is complete, and this is exactly where I last left it when I was reading it on my Kindle 3. Now to flip through the pages, just tap the buttons on the side, and you can see that every 10 or so pages it has to flash the screen to adjust the e-ink. There you go. Now you can only do it one at a time, you can't just hold the, the key down and let it scroll through. Now you have some other options if you press the menu button right here. So you get some options up here. So you can go back to the Kindle store, change the font size, which is what I want to try out here. So you can see you can select through a number of font sizes and it previews in the background. You can also change the typeface from regular, condensed, sans serif. You can also change the line spacing to large, medium, small, words per line to default, fewer, or fewest. You can also change the rotation to uh, portrait, landscape with the keypad on the left, uh, portrait upside down, and uh, landscape with the keyboard on the right. So let's do that one. You can see now you're in landscape mode. So of course there is no accelerometer, it won't do it automatically. And when you press the D-pad while you're reading text, a cursor will appear, you can see it at the top, and you can navigate around the page. And as you do so, a definition will appear. So let's go to language. So language of a person, manner, or gesture displaying or having a disinclination for physical exertion or effort. Now if we want a, a broader definition, just press the center key. And now we have some other options so we can see the full definition. Start a highlight, create a note, or cancel. Let's see the full definition. It should bring us right to the dictionary. So there's the full dictionary definition. Uh, and let, in order to get back to the book, just press the back key. So you're back to your book. You also have the option to go to a specific page which you can enter here. So either the page number or a location which is uh, Amazon's proprietary way of indexing pages. You also have the option to sync to the furthest red page. So if you start going back into the book, you forgot where you left off, this will take you there. We also have a book description. We can search this book. So if we can search specific text. So we have a search box here, press the keyboard key and search, let's search tree. I bet there's plenty in this book. So there's 96 instances of tree mentioned in this book and it will take me to each one of them. And also add a bookmark. Now you can see they've placed a the bookmark by turning the page in dog ear style. Now on the home screen, if you press the menu button, you have several options. You can go to turn wireless off to conserve battery, shop in the Kindle store, view archived items, search, create a new collection, sync and check for new items, settings, view special offers, experimental, and screen rotation. First thing I want to do is go to shop in Kindle store. Now here I can browse by books, newspaper, magazines. I can go to their featured items and things to try. So let's just pick the detachment and we can buy. So you can see the Kindle price is $5.99 or you can try a sample or add to wish list. So click buy, don't really want to buy this. So let's go to try a sample. So the sample is downloading and will appear on my home screen once it's done. So you can see at the very top we have the detachment by John Rain. So let's click on that. So it's not that many pages, it's just the first uh, 10 or so pages of the first chapter. Now if we go to search, we have several options here. 
Let's uh, type in Apple. So we can search my items, the Kindle store, Google, uh, search Wikipedia or search dictionary or go to the web, which will bring up a web browser. So let's just search the Kindle store for now. So there we go. We have several books. And if we click OK, we can take a look. So if you want to buy that, it's only 99 cents. Click OK. Brings up the book and it will download the item to my home screen. So if we go to home, there it is. So we have some cover art and we can start reading. Now let's skip down to experimental. This is where you can load the web browser. So basically we have a web browser here with an address bar, a back button, a reload button. And it's pretty rudimentary because you don't have a mouse or a touch screen. So you have to move this cursor around. So what I want to do is go to the Apple website. The Apple page loads and we have this little viewing box here that we can move around. This is basically a magnifier. So if I want to zoom on this section, just press the OK button and it zooms up. Now to get out of that you just press the back button. Zooms back out and basically reloads the page. Now because this is the subsidized cheapest Kindle, uh, this does come with ads. So you see some ads posted on the home screen. Now to power down the Kindle all you have to do is hold the power button and it shuts down. Wake it back up, just press the power button and hold it for a few seconds. There you go. Now taking a look at the Kindle 4 versus the old Kindle 3, you can see there's a huge difference in size. There's a big area here for the QWERTY keyboard and this just has the uh, small area for the physical D-pad and the menu buttons. But you can see that the screen size is the same. These are both 6 inch uh, uh, e-ink screens so there's not a big difference there. Uh, this feels quite a bit heavier than the Kindle 4. It's not like this felt heavy to begin with, but uh, this certainly feels very lightweight. Now they appear to be about the same thickness, not a big difference there. Uh, on the back you see that the Kindle 3 had speakers, the Kindle 4 does not. The Kindle 3 also had a headphone jack, and the Kindle 4 does not. So on the bottom of the Kindle 3 you see you have a volume controller with a headphone jack, an LED indicator, the micro USB port, and a power slider. The Kindle 4 is much simpler just with the micro USB connector, an LED indicator, and a power button. Now, it's also interesting to point out that the buttons on the Kindle 3 are actually used on the Kindle 4. There's just fewer of them but they have the same design including the same design for the D-pad. Now to test the difference between these two displays, the Kindle 4 versus the Kindle 3, we're just going to turn some pages here. So we're going to go forward. Now the big difference here is that uh, the Kindle 3 has to refresh the entire screen, has to flash the entire screen every time you turn a page. The Kindle 4 only has to do it every 10 or so pages. But you can see the speed is about the same overall. Overall, I'm very impressed by the new Kindle. At $79, it's an unbeatable price for a superb e-ink screen in the lightest and cheapest e-reader on the market, which is backed by Amazon's unbeatable selection and seamless cloud syncing. However, in the end, I would probably recommend the Kindle Touch for the full touch-based keyboard and the touch controls to eliminate the side-mounted page turn buttons, which are easy to trigger by accident. So once again, guys, this is Mike V. Detroit Borg. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you again in the next video.